This video is part of the series to accompany discrete mathematics and functional programming. I'm Thomas Van Drunen. The previous video introduced lists in ML. The most important thing to note was how lists are defined recursively. A list is either an empty list or an element followed by the rest of the list. In this video, we're going to look at writing ML functions that operate on lists. As I mentioned in the previous video, working on lists is quite the crucial matter in ML programming, at least for the tasks that are relevant for this course. In terms of the big goals of the course, writing list functions is the main exercise you'll do for learning to think recursively. I will warn you ahead of time that the examples in this video, which are also used in section 2.1 of the book, are a little contrived. There are two reasons for that. First, um, a lot of the interesting problems require other pieces of ML that we haven't learned yet. So we're stuck with just the problems that use what we know so far. Second, I've saved the good problems that we can do at this point for the exercises, and I don't want to give away any of the answers. But contrived though they be, the examples here will still il illustrate the point. First off, a function on lists is just a function that encapsulates and generalizes an operation that can be performed on any list. Let's take the problem of removing the first two items in a list and making a new list by tacking them on to the back of what's left of the original list. Doing this by hand requires you to think through list operations a little, but I hope this isn't too hard. Let's put a list in a variable. We can take the head of that list. We can take the head of the tail of that list. And we can take the tail of the tail of that list. And now we can put those pieces together. Now we can take the tail of the tail of that list and concatenate onto the back of that the list containing the head of that list and the head of the tail of that list. As a self-test, you should do a type analysis on that expression. Now we can do this on any list, or at least any sufficiently long list, by wrapping that expression in a function and using a parameter, let's say xx, instead of the bound variable aa. I'm going to call this function move to. Let's try that on a few lists. But what if we try it on a list with only one element? That doesn't work because the tail of that list doesn't have a head or a tail. Similarly, if we try this on a list with no elements, well, that doesn't work for more than one reason. One reason is that the ML interpreter has no way of uh, discerning the type of that list. But the reason that I want you to notice is that we cannot take the head or the tail of an empty list. Additionally, we should note that this function is, well, it's ugly. Lots of applications of tail and head and concatenations and things like that. And you may remember that I said in the previous video that we'd rarely use the head and tail operations, at least directly. So let me introduce you to pattern matching with lists. 
The kind of lists that this operation applies to are lists with at least two elements. That means they fit the pattern move to version two, A cons B cons rest. This means viable arguments to this function have a head, which we're going to call A, and a tail, which in turn has a head we're going to call B, and a tail we're going to call rest, as in the rest of the list. Or more succinctly, it is a list with an item A cons to an item B cons to the rest of the list. Now we can refer to those first two items by the parameters A and B and write the body of the function as rest catted with the list containing A and B. This gives us a match non-exhaustive warning. And that's because there is no pattern for lists of one or zero elements. And that's okay, sort of. It's just a fact that this function isn't defined for lists like that. Think about that parameter rest. It could be a list with no elements, as here. A is 4, B is 5, rest is the empty list. Or it could be a list with one element. In this case, A is 4, B is 5, and rest is the list containing only 8. Or it can be a list with many elements. In this case, A is 4, B is 5, and rest is the list 12, 3, 9, 14. All of these match the pattern. If we try this on a list with 0 or 1 elements, then we get a non-exhaustive match failure because we've applied this function to something, in this case a list with one element, that does not match the pattern given for this function. The big lesson here is that we can use the cons operator in patterns for lists. The cons operator is a synthetic operator. It's used to put things together to make new lists, but we can use it indirectly as an analytic operator. By using it in a pattern here, we have extracted the head and tail, and head of tail, and tail of tail, of a list. This is why we'll rarely use the head and tail operators. It's important to know that the cat operator isn't allowed in patterns. One explanation for this is that if you had a pattern like A cat B, so let's try that. And let's suppose we're just going to switch those around and this function will cat A at the end of B. The ML interpreter gives us the error that a non-constructor is applied to argument and pattern, and specifically that's its complaint against the use of the cat operator in the pattern. And as I was saying, the explanation for why this is not allowed is that in this case it would be ambiguous how a list fits that pattern since the break between the first part, which we call A, and the second part, which we call B, could be anywhere. In theory, something like the following could work. Let's make this function move to version 3. It's going to have a list containing exactly two elements, A and B, at the front. And the pattern for that list is that that sublist will be concatenated to the rest of some list. And so what we would want to do in this case is simply take the rest of the list and concatenate onto the back of that the list containing A and B. But that doesn't work either. The real reason is that the cat operator isn't a basic operator for lists, but something derived from the cons operator. To see how cat is derived from cons, you should do exercise 2.2.9 in the book. This first example is unusual in that it doesn't apply to all lists, only lists with at least two elements. Most list operations can and should be defined to apply to all lists. Let's take this problem. Suppose we want to transform a list 
so that every element in it is repeated. An empty list is, of course, a special case. An empty list with each element repeated is just an empty list. But let's think through the problem on a list that is not empty. We want to turn the list 1, 2, 3 into the list 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. We know the natural way to break apart a list, or to analyze a list, is to cut off its head. We rephrase the problem as, how do we repeat the first or head item, and how do we repeat all the other items? Well, the tail is a list, so we can apply this problem recursively to the list 2, 3. We need to repeat the head item 2, and we need to repeat each item in the list containing only 3. Once again, we apply this problem to the list with 3 as its head item. We want to repeat the head item, and we want to repeat every item in the empty list that is that tail. Repeating every item in the empty list is just the empty list. Now we cons 3 to that result twice. That gives us the result of repeating every element in the list that has only 3. We cons 2 to that result twice. That gives us the result of repeating every element in the list 2, 3. Finally, we cons 1 to that result. Now we have our final result. Here is how we think of the problem. First, break off the head. Now consider the problem of repeating each element in the rest of the list. If we could get that solution, then we could cons the first item to the front twice, and we'd have the final solution. Hence, we may apply this operation recursively on the rest of the list and modify that result to make the final result. Let's code that up. The base case, repeating each in an empty list, is still empty. In the recursive case, we repeat the head twice in front of repeating each of the rest of the list. Let's try it. Notice the type of this function. It's reported as apostrophe a list to apostrophe a list. The interpreter is saying that it takes a list of anything and returns a list of that same thing. We can apply this not only to lists of ints, but also to lists of reals or anything else. Let's try another example. Let's say we want to sum, that is, add up, all the elements in a list. Let's assume a list of integers. Our thinking process is, what should we do with an empty list? Well, a list with no elements sums to zero. Then, what should we do with a list with at least one element, call it A, and the rest of the list? We know nothing about the rest of the list. It could be empty. It could have lots of stuff in it. But the list as a whole, which we'd call a cons rest, has at least one element, namely a. In this case, we add a, which we assume to be an integer, to the sum of the rest of the list. This adds up everything else in the list, and then adds the first item to that sum. These two examples, repeat each and sum, look very different. The way I would articulate the biggest difference is that repeat each makes a new list as its result, as it processes a list, whereas sum processes a list but produces an int result. But I want you to see their similarity. 
In each problem, we have a base case for an empty list, a recursive call, a use of the head element. In repeat each, we duplicate the head element. In sum, we use it as it is. And we combine the use of the head with the result of the recursive call. Most of your list functions will follow a template like this. We have a simple answer for an empty list, the base case. We have a pattern for a non-empty list, analyzing it into a head item, call it A, and the rest of the list. We have something done to the head item. This might be trivial, that is, we might use it just as it is. We have a recursive call, and we have a way to combine the head and the result of the recursive call. Here is one more example. This time, a function that takes a list of tuples. Let's say we want to produce a list like the given one, but with each pair reversed. That is to say, the pair 2, 5 would be turned into 5, 2. On an empty list, we have no tuples to switch, so we return an empty list. On a non-empty list, we assume the head is a tuple, so we reflect that in our pattern. We reverse the order of that head pair, and we cons that to the result of switching the other pairs. Here is how that compares to the two previous examples. It has particular kinship with repeat each, since they both produce lists. So that's how we process lists recursively. But the only way you'll learn to do it is by practice. So I commend the exercises in section 2.2 to you, and I encourage you to work hard. If this is new stuff to you, then it might take some work. But keep at it and you'll get it. In the next video, we'll turn back to a set topic, specifically the idea of a power set. This will reinforce thinking about lists because we'll use lists in reasoning about power sets.